coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. Local residents made their way over to the Leader Community Center on Monday, hoping to hear some positive news on the health care situation in their community. The Saskatchewan Abilities Council in Swift Current will mark its 50th anniversary in 2015. The annual Go Green Friday brought together a variety of volunteers. Downtown Swift Current has become an attraction for tourists and local residents every Saturday with Market Square. Swift Current's redneck Bettys have developed a loyal fan base and gave their best for the crowd during the season finale at the IPlex. Thanks for joining us here today. Leader and area residents received some long-awaited health care news on Monday. We have more in today's top story. Local residents made their way over to the Leader Community Center on Monday, hoping to hear some positive news on the health care situation in their community. The Honorable Dustin Duncan, Minister of Health for the province of Saskatchewan, announced a $12 million approval for a new integrated health care facility in Leader. A project which incorporates the existing Western Senior Citizens Long-Term Care Facility with the addition of acute and primary health care, community health and ambulance services. We know that there is a great demand for infrastructure renewal all around the province. Uh, this project makes a lot of sense not only for how the region wants to deliver services, this is one of our innovation sites, a primary health care innovation site, but also going forward into the future it just makes a lot of sense to uh, bring all those services under one roof. Uh, it, it, it means that we can um, uh, re retire those facilities in the community that, um, frankly, we just need to stop putting maintenance dollars into. The province will cover 80% of the cost, while the local community will pick up the tab for 20% or $2.5 million, money already raised through the efforts of a determined local team. Tim Geiger is the reeve for the arm of Happy Land and says the local investment has been in place for months as this was a project close to the heart of many. We were on diversion from our hospital for approximately one year and there was a lot of people that said that will never open up again. And at a community meeting at that time, in a moment of misguided exuberance, I said that we would have a new facility and I would see that through. And when I got home that night, I said to myself, what have I just said? And we had to work for 10 more years to get where we are today and it was a lot of hard work. We met with the government probably 10 times. Uh, we had the Premier out here looking at all our facilities and it, there are a million steps to getting this done. Sentiments echoed by former Town Councillor Gary Meyer who rallied for health care upgrades for numerous years and says the announcement will benefit the community for generations to come. You know it's been uh, something we had to do either was uh, you know lose our hospital completely or have something have something done so this is just a great announcement it just puts new uh, uh, new life in our community uh, people were you know talking about leaving you know, if we lose our hospital lose our doctors uh, people leave and uh, you know, on, the, on the other side of that also is people won't come to a town that doesn't have a, uh, a doctor or a, a good health facility and with the amalgamation of all health care services under one roof and leader client services will be enhanced we have some very innovative services and leader that we're really proud of and to have everybody working together uh, in a collaborative team, which they do now. By having everyone under one roof, we really can help them uh, do that easier. Construction will begin on the new $12 million integrated health care facility and leader in the new year, with plans to open the doors in 2017. Leader is located 90 minutes northwest of Swift Current. The Saskatchewan Abilities Council is planning to relocate its Swift Current branch while expanding on its programs. The Saskatchewan Abilities Council in Swift Current will mark its 50th anniversary in 2015. And on the eve of this milestone, the organization is planning a multi-million dollar expansion. The announcement was recently made at its awareness luncheon by President Stan Louch, who says they've purchased five acres of land along Oasis Drive at a cost of close to $1 million an acquisition which will assist the council in looking to the future while moving out of its current location along Railway Street and amalgamating all of its services under one roof. You know, we've been located in our facility for 25 plus years. Um, it, it's been expanded once over the last 
10 years, we've looked at different scenarios, purchasing land close, and it just is not the best fit in our opinion. We hope to bring more of our programs under one roof, therefore supervisory uh, uh, aspects will be brought under one instead of having to drive all over. The nicer thing is the, the, the clients, the trainees, the employees, because many of these people are actually employees. Um, they will be having more people to uh, interact with. And with approximately 60 clients already benefiting from the services of the Saskatchewan Abilities Council and Swift Current, the new facility will create new opportunities. So our, our planning for the future <clears throat> includes uh, expanding into child and youth services. So uh, we need space to do that. We have no space to do that currently. We have no space to grow where we're at now, so we can't uh, at this point accept many more individuals because we don't have the space to do that. So a new facility just opens up a huge opportunity for us to continue to grow in the direction. And, and like you heard me say, it's about you know inclusion. It's about enhancing people uh, with disabilities there participation in community and uh, so that will help us to do that because then we can develop other programming. As the Saskatchewan Abilities Council finalizes the project details with its architect, a capital fundraising campaign for the project will launch on November the 1st. The Saskatchewan Abilities Council hopes to be moved into its new location along Oasis Drive in Swift Current by late 2015. Another exciting season of Market Square returns to downtown Swift Current, featuring live entertainment, fresh garden produce, crafts, and other unique vendors. Market Square, every Saturday at the corner of Central and Chaplin. Presented by Standard Motors, in partnership with Innovation Credit Union and Southwest TV News. Swift Current residents recently came together for a one-day event to beautify the city. We have more in this report. The annual Go Green Friday brought together a variety of volunteers, including Stark and Marsh employees, who registered for a full day of giving back to the environment. The day's lineup saw volunteers addressing various projects around the city, from planting trees along 11th Avenue and the Chinook Parkway, to hauling in wood chips at Memorial Park, while enhancing the beauty of the trees already adorning the landscape. Over at Elmwood Park, volunteers worked on a project led by the Swift Current Creek Watershed Stewards, Carla Rudolph is an agrologist and is back for a second year to continue with an extensive project started in 2013 on this riparian area. And the whole point behind this is to try to see if we can use an area along the creek to um, not really recreate but uh, do the same jobs as what a traditional riparian area does. Um, riparian areas are really important for a variety of reasons and in urban areas we often struggle with how to treat our riparian areas because we have houses and roads and parking lots and you know walkways that are right next to them. Mm -hmm. um, so basically uh, we sort of prepped the site at this event last year at Go Green Friday in 2013 and then in the spring we um, put in a bunch of the native prairie plantings um, there were a variety of things, including choke cherry and hawthorn, um, green ash and Manitoba maple, some dogwood, which is some native willow. So all of those things went into the site in the spring, and we covered the site up with um, wood chips and a bunch of uh, leaves as well, just to create a bit of a mulch. And so the whole purpose behind this is sort of uh, to see whether or not we can use ecological methods to do a restoration project and create at least a small portion of the bank of the city um, of the Swift Current Creek within city limits into uh, a healthy functioning riparian area. The Go Green Friday has become a tradition over the past six years led by Stark and Marsh, a project which the firm says falls in line with its core values. Well, I think it should be important to everybody. Um, you know, uh, uh, we do a lot of things in the office. Uh, we go through a lot of paper. Uh, it's about that carbon footprint and, and what you're doing and what your legacy is. So paper's not going to go away for us, so we have to do something on the other side, and, and we feel that this is one way that we can do it. Uh, so it's not just about the carbon footprint. It's also about beautifying the city and making this a great place for people to want to come and live and work. Close to 100 volunteers participate each year in Stark and Marsh's Go Green Friday, beautifying the city's landscape for current and future generations. Market Square will officially wrap up on Saturday, and it was a busy summer in downtown Swift Current. Downtown Swift Current has become an attraction for tourists and local residents every Saturday with Market Square. Over the past four years, the market has grown, 
bringing in more vendors and themed weekends, such as this cruise on Saturday, as an array of classic cars, trucks, and motorcycles lined First Avenue. The display had something for everyone. This is our third show and shine and the community has come out. Um, it's just a gorgeous sunny day, a little bit of wind, which is nice. The fall leaves, all the colors are out and we have more cars registered and motorcycles registered this year than last year. So every year it's growing and of course this year we filled the whole street and the vendors. Thank you to the community, thank you to the vendors, thank you to all the car owners and, and motorcycle owners for coming out. And as shoppers made their way through the farmer's market area, an array of vendors showcased garden fresh vegetables, crafts, and baking. Diana and Bo Siona are familiar faces at Market Square, with passersby lured in with homemade preserves and gluten-free products. A weekly event which Diana looks forward to. We do a little bit on Thursday, and then we work like crazy early Friday morning till about 11.30 at night. Cinnamon buns, cheese buns, and and whoopie pies, they're really popular, and cake pops, and it's just excellent down here. It's like a big party. The last installment of Market Square for this season is set for Saturday, September 27th, with entertainment, food, and other vendors awaiting you, all at the corner of Central and Chaplin. Another roller derby season has come to an end, and a number of redneck Bettys will be hanging up their skates for good. Over the past five years, roller derby has become an exciting summer attraction for many in the stands. Swift Current's redneck Bettys have developed a loyal fan base and gave their best for the crowd during the season finale at the Iplex. The Bettys showed off their hard-hitting moves with a 217-149 to win over Brandon's Gang Green. And as the team wraps up another exciting season, Veteran Rhett Rowe, who started with the Bettys five years ago, is taking some time off. She'll be switching gears to assist her daughter as she pursues gymnastics. A difficult choice after helping to build the momentum over the years. It's a hard decision, except that I've seen tremendous growth, and I know that this club will go forth and be the amazing club that I've skated with for five years. So it's kind of like a mama bird leaving the nest a little bit, and I know these guys are going to be great. And as she says goodbye to the Bettys, Rhett Rowe will cherish the experience of her roller derby family. I could let go of everything, but I could never give up the people that I've met. That's probably the best thing that's happened to me in the sport, was meeting an incredible group of women, hundreds over the years, who've touched my heart all in a different way. So that's my fondest memory is each of those friendships that I've made. With Rhett and possibly a number of other Bettys hanging up their skates, the team's coach is optimistic for the upcoming season as many of the new recruits have earned their stripes. You know, our girls that are first, second years, again, they're moving into that, that veteran stage now where, you know, they can, they can take those spots and, and they're going to be missed, absolutely, because they just bring so much. However, they've taught these girls and they've showed these girls, the, they've given them a roadmap to how to be a winning team and we can't thank them enough for that. The Redneck Bettys will take some time off for now and then regroup in January for team tryouts and training gearing up for the 2015 roller derby season. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.